completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, part 35, fitting the vacuum pump and the water pump. What you see on screen at the moment are the rough castings for the vacuum pump and the water pump. I bought them from Stuart Models and this is how they arrived. They needed quite a lot of cleaning up. That didn't take long, it wasn't difficult. Then I put the castings into some plastic bags and posted the whole lot to my friend Ronnie Mall in Scotland. Ronnie has a very interesting YouTube channel and it's called RGM Steam Heed. Steam Heed is a Scottish pronunciation of the word steam head and the RGM are Ronnie's initials. This is a before and after shot. Here's the before. And now, here is the after. Ronnie Mall's metalworking talents are far in excess of mine and possibly because that's what he did for a living for most of his life. Why didn't I make these? Well, I really didn't fancy it, to be honest. My engineering is OK, but it's nowhere near this standard. To make myself feel better, I can only presume that Ronnie Mall is possibly a terrible keyboard player. The big question is, how are these parts going to fit? Well, it is encouraging because the gasket fits. At this stage, I would like to mention that when I measured the position of the studs on the main casting of the engine, they were not the same as on the drawing. Very close, but unfortunately very slightly too close together. I'm not talking much at all. With two or three strokes of a needle file, everything fitted together perfectly. For the initial test assembly of this vacuum pump, I'm using some brass washers to stop the nuts from marking the gunmetal. It is going to be a while before I can fit these parts permanently in position. Moving my attention to the other part, which is the water pump, that was a perfect fit on these three studs. I would like to tell you what these two parts are for. One of them is a vacuum pump, the larger of the two, and this one is a water pump. Full-size steam engines are generally fitted with an exhaust condenser. Sometimes it allows the exhaust condensate to be reused and pumped back into the boiler after extracting the oil. What's the purpose of these two parts on the side of the engine? This one that's on screen at the moment is the water pump, but I'm pretty sure this is not designed to be a boiler feed pump. The hole through the valve is too small. As you can see the hole is threaded and that is only 4BA which is very small. And if it was a crankshaft driven boiler feed pump, the hole would have to be a good bit bigger than that. I think that this pump is designed to pump water into the condenser in order to help condense the exhaust steam. Why the vacuum pump? Because exhaust steam as it condenses creates a vacuum. But the vacuum in condensers often isn't perfect, so it needs a bit of help from a vacuum pump. To remove such things as air that may be present in the condenser that doesn't need to be, so where would this air be coming from? Well, it just could be a leak in the tank, it could be a leak in the piping, or even blowing past the gland on the piston rod. At this moment in time, I'm very concerned to find out whether once these parts are mounted, the shafts are in line with the operating arms. And as you can see, the water pump is pretty good, but the operating arm is slightly out of line with the vacuum pump. This is quite an easy fix, there's a couple of ways I can do this and when I come to do the job I will show you. It's time I think for a handy tip. I've screwed the 7BA nut onto a 7BA stud. I'm holding the stud with some surgical forceps and this will allow me to position the nut on the stud of the inner side of the water pump. By holding the nut in position and doing this with my scriber, the nut eventually engages with the stud on the engine. Simple but effective. When I was talking to Ronnie on the phone a few weeks ago, he did mention this, and yes, Ronnie, you were definitely right, it was a pain. And what makes it worse is, I will have to do this again when I fit the pump for real. I need to tighten all of these nuts to hold the pump firmly to the casting so I can see how well the ram of the pump aligns with the operating lever. When everything was tightened up, it didn't look too bad. The ram of the water pump aligned perfectly with the lever that will be operating it. I'm going to show you the other Stuart triple expansion engine that I'm going to be rebuilding. And although it looks okay in this image, the holes in the operating levers are not in the middle. And in this close-up you can also see that the general standard of engineering of most of the parts is nowhere near the engineering of Ronnie Mall. I've probably already mentioned it earlier, 
there's a simple way of aligning this operating lever with the centre of the vacuum pump shaft. While you're thinking about that, it's time for a short intermission. This is a very small water pump designed to feed a boiler. So it's now pumping against pressure. I'm not talking to myself, by the way. My friend Rob's with me. He's just not on camera. This was the demonstration model that Blackgate's engineering used to use at exhibitions. Don used to make a lot of these pumps, and I bought quite a few at one time. I remember they were quite quirky, and you had to use steam oil for lubrication. It's still making them, and they really are good. They're just a slightly different design to this one. To say that the pump's been run at exhibitions for quite a number of years, possibly without much oil, it still runs OK. Here's another type of water pump. This is the Stuart type, and this one's not bad. I don't find these to be very efficient at pumping water, though. The ram is very small, and they use quite a lot of steam in order to pump the water. Like most boiler feed pumps, they are a bit quirky, but very good to look at. Time now for more nut manipulation. After tightening the nuts that hold the parts in place, I'm removing the two on the vacuum pump studs so I can lift the vacuum pump out of the way because I need to drill a hole in the casting below the pump. I'm using my calibrated eye for this. I sort of know where to drill the hole, I think. First of all, I go through with a small drill bit. This is a 1 8 of an inch drill bit. And as you can see, it's just broken through into the middle of the casting. After drilling the pilot hole, I enlarged it using a larger drill bit. This one is a tapping size drill bit for a quarter by 26 threads per inch. And now with a suitable 26 threads per inch tap, making sure it's going in perfectly squarely, I cut the thread. All I have to do now is screw in the fitting that Ronnie sent along with the vacuum pump. And that seems to look OK. It's perfectly square and it's a good fit. Here I'm applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant to seal it because this is a vacuum pump and I do not want any air leaks. To improve the appearance of the casting in this area because it did get marked by bits of swarf and the drill bit etc during the drilling and tapping operation. But now it's looking good again and it looks especially good with the parts fitted in place. Many thanks to my friend Ronnie Mall for making them for me. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.